I want to set you free today from the feeling that you have to find your calling. That's a cultural concept. It's not a biblical one. You don't have to find your calling. In fact, if the text is correct, if Samuel is an illustration, then I don't have to find my calling because if I will serve the purpose of the season that I'm in in my life right now, watch this, get ready to shout, my calling will find me. In that good news, Christian soldiers, aren't you glad to know that when Samuel heard a voice, and he didn't even know whose voice it was, and here's the thing about it. I want to talk about the culture, and then I want to talk about the contact. The contact, because when he first heard the voice, it sounded like something he had heard before. Have you ever noticed it's hard to know the difference between when you're speaking to you and when God is speaking to you? We still have to realize that the only way that the will of God or the Word of God or the voice of God can be recognized, that's what the Bible said that that Eli, who was old, who couldn't see physically. I've been on this thing lately that we really need people in our life who are older than us, who have been along the journey, and to respect the price that they paid, and to not just think that because they don't go on SoundCloud or because they don't have a lot of Instagram followers that they have nothing to teach us. I'm really seeing the value in people who… They may not have the physical vision that they used to have, but they can discern spiritual things. And Eli wasn't even a perfect priest. In fact, God was in the process of moving him out of the way. And even in that transition, because the whole passage is about transition, it's Samuel transitioning from a boy to a man, from, from boy, boy, boys to men. I was just thinking, you know, it's hard to say goodbye. But when. When Eli is transitioning out and when Samuel is transitioning up and, and he's ultimately stepping into the thing God created him for, God deals with Samuel, but he does it through Eli. And Whatever God is going to speak in your life is going to come in the context of relationships. And I chose the word contact to describe it because whoever you put around you the most will start to affect the voice inside of you that speaks to you. And have you ever noticed that God's voice sometimes in your life sounds like your wife? Sometimes for me it sounds like my kids. Sometimes in my life I've noticed that if I am not selective about my contacts, I will start hearing I don't mean like out loud voices. I don't want you to send me off after I preach today or anything like that. I mean the voice in my mind a lot of times when, when I was going through a counseling session to try to understand myself better, the one thing that the therapist would keep saying is, whose voice is that? You know these things you say to yourself? You go like, uh, you know, I'm so stupid and you never get anything right, and well, of course you screwed it up, you screw everything up, you know, all that. And she keeps saying, whose voice is that? Whose voice is that? And I didn't know if she was just trying to get me to say, you know, it was my dad, <laughs> you know, my mom, <laughs> like the point of all therapy. My diapers were too tight. I admit it. <laughs> but what I realized is that most of us who are not clinically insane don't actually hear voices. We process thoughts. Right? So we say the voice of God. How does the voice of God come into your life? Through thoughts. Through thoughts. And that's why Samuel was confused, right? Because he heard something, so he went where he knew to go. And I want to point out something about this. He did the right thing. He did the right thing. He ran. I noticed the Bible said that when he heard his name called, Samuel. First of all, it didn't sound it didn't sound strange to him. It sounded like what he was used to. So he he ran because that's what he did because he had the right passion but he ran to the wrong person. Some of you right now, you have the right passion, but you're running to the wrong person or the wrong place. 
Now, this is not only true in the case of Samuel, it was true of Moses. God called him to deliver his people from the Egyptians. Moses had the right passion, but where he messed up, listen to this, you see, when he killed the Egyptian, it was the right passion, but it was misplaced. He tried to do it his way. He didn't get it right the first time. And some of the things that you've gotten wrong in your life, some of the mistakes that you've made, it was God stirring you up, but it was Eli that you ran to. You ran to the thing that God was trying to remove out of your life because that's what you were used to. You ran to the thing that you were familiar with because it's all your mind could understand. And so God gave you a gift, but you used that gift for you for a little while until you found out, unless I offer the gift back to the giver, it's going to come back empty. But God brought you here today to let you know that was my voice calling you. That was me that gave you that talent. That was me that made you good at that. That was me that opened the door for you. That was me that gave you that responsibility. That was me that gave you health. That was me that gave you strength. That was me that gave you that connection. It was him the whole time. It was, it was the Lord that called Samuel, but it was Eli that Samuel ran to. What are you running to? If you're, run, if you're running to something that is not your purpose, you'll feel, it, you'll feel it in several ways, but one of the things I want to mention is I'm trying to surround myself in this stage of my life with people who bring out the God in me, and that's just me. Now, I don't mean I'm going to be mean to people who don't know the Lord or I'm going to go and live in a monastery or something like that, but you know, there are some, there are some texts that I don't return in this stage of my life because I feel like I'm in a season where I'm trying to do important things and my calling is valuable, and so my contacts are very important because certain stuff is contagious. And I know there are certain people, when I get around them, I, I, feel, I feel something rise in me that lets me know I can overcome, and I need them around me. I need them to rub off on me. I need them to speak into my life. I need them to encourage me. I don't need people who are laying back on the last thing God did in this season of my life. I need people to push me forward. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I gotta be careful reading the comments on my Instagram in this season because whatever I make contact with, I catch and see I need the word of the Lord. I need vision. I need hope. I need purpose. I need security. And so he runs to Eli, but Eli tells him, It's God you need to speak to. And the right contacts in your life will always point you back to the only one who has real power. Thank you, God, for this word. I feel your spirit on this one. This is going to help you. Because what? The concept of calling that most of us have is that you're going to go on a 40 day fast in the Holy Land, and God's going to speak to you when you walk where Jesus walked in the Sea of Galilee. But the Lord is not going to speak to you on the Sea of Galilee from a voice on the water. He's going to speak to you. And I know you don't want to hear it because it's sexy to think that some, someday there's going to be a voice that speaks from heaven. It's not going to be like that. It's going to sound like Eli. It's going to sound like Eli, and it is through Eli that God calls Samuel. Eli. This isn't Billy Graham. This is the dude who blew it, and this is how bad he blew it. Watch what ultimately happens when Samuel after three times. Everybody say three times. How many times do I have to tell you? One time, Holly, she loses her temper with our kids a lot. Y'all pray for her. Just kidding. She's a very patient mom. But one time she was so mad at Elijah. He was only about four. She said, How many times do I have to tell you? He got this real fear look in his eyes. He goes, Three times. <laughs> look at the verse eight again. A third time. How many are glad that God has called waiting? That God will call you again. 
Ask Jonah. Jonah wasn't even a talented preacher. He didn't have funny stories. He didn't have good charisma. He didn't even like people, but God used him because when God calls you, he will call back. You know how there are some people when you call them, you have to call them, and so you're secretly hoping you get their voicemail because you really don't want to talk to them anyway? Some of you think God is like that, like he really wants someone else, and he's really glad that he doesn't have to deal with you, but God wants you. God wants you. God chose you. God put the genetics in you, the DNA in you, the, the passion in you. The opportunity is for you. What God has for you, it is for you. That's why you don't have to be jealous, insecure bitter, resentful. That's why you don't have to get back. That's why you don't have to take revenge, because what God has for you is for you. Y'all awake? Somebody shout, here I am. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream, and share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.